Welcome back to the show. We got a great one lined up for you. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, $2.42 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is off by 4.5%. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. 63900 plus for Bitcoin, as you can see. Uh, pulling 3.6 off of that for the last 24 hours, 3,100 plus for Ethereum, 9% off on a 24 and almost the same on a seven day. $114 billion plus market cap for Tether and USDC slipping to the number seven spot here. 33.8 billion plus market cap for that. Number six XRP up back up to the number six spot. As you know, the last week or so, XRP dancing between six, seven, and eight ranking here on market cap up to six now at 61 cents, off by 1.7 and 24, but up by 6.2 on the seven day. We'll keep an eye on it. Let's look at the price very quickly here. The price between 60 and 63 cents, and you can see where we're sitting now at 62. We'll keep an eye on it. I do want to remind everybody very quickly here. I trust capital is the best home for gold, silver, and crypto IRAs. You know, if you were looking for a way to get your crypto gains and not have to deal with capital gains or tax issues, IRAs are the way to do that, right? That's exactly what they're designed to do. So make sure you click the link to my sponsor below because the only thing better than buying crypto is buying tax-free crypto. And what a time to buy before the market explodes. I tell you that. Make sure you click the link. Check out my sponsor. Spot Ethereum ETF trading over $1 billion for the second day in a row. Hello. Yes, the floodgates are open. The liquidity hose is in the Ethereum pool. Yes, coming from where? It's coming from the financial institutions and their client base. Come on in. Yeah, which is another signal that USD Tether is going to get its wings clipped. We'll see. Here's one thing we, we called, isn't it? Remember when Mark Cuban made his tweet? Man, I'm meeting with the Biden administration. They asked me about crypto. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I like Mark Cuban, man, but, you know, that died in the wool Dem business or that died in the wool Republican business just don't float. That boat don't float at my house. That political holding on to your ideologies right to the end as if everybody is exactly what the party says it is. That's so fake to me, Mark. But you got burned in the end because you made such a big deal about them calling you about crypto so you could look like a smacked ass in the end. Because you know what? I said, as soon as you said you were meeting with Kamala Harris in the Biden camp, we're going to talk about crypto. Listen, Operation Choke Point 2.0 was created by the Biden administration. Hello, uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren, anti-crypto army general. Yeah, this was more political posturing from the Dems Operation Choke Point 2.0 was created by them to stifle crypto innovation, and it's very real. And if the Democrats want to show their support, stop having little meetings and powwows and just simply shit can Gary Gensler. Drop the cases against Ripple, Coinbase, Kraken, and others immediately. Pass Fit 21 Act. Hey, now Mark Cuban would look really good, right? Wow, that was some effective meeting you had there, Mark. You know, and uh, vote for Deaton in Massachusetts. And if you don't live there, please donate what you can. The fight is very real because they're liars. And you're about to see that Kamala Harris is a liar and her, her whole administration. She's decided now not to speak at Bitcoin 2024, but she's not done with us yet. Not only is she not going to speak there. So it was all a bunch of lies, Mark. Make sure you get that T-shirt for the Dems washed. Um, breaking Kamala Harris not only is not attending the Bitcoin conference, she says Bitcoin money is for criminals. As I said, I'm a one-issue voter, and I'm voting her ass out. And you know what? I have no problem with it. Trump, on his first run, four years, was not hit to crypto 
and I wouldn't, didn't vote for him either. So this isn't just I'm a conservative and Brad's showing his true color. No, no, no. I'm an independent, and I'm an independent conservative, and I'm socially liberal. But the reality is, is that I don't go for this. I don't care who you are. When I tell you I'm a one-issue voter, that's exactly what I mean. And if he don't do what he's got to, all of who he brings in has got to go. I'll show you where my allegiance is. My allegiance is to my own pursuits and goals. I don't need any more friends. Brad Garlinghouse jumps in it here. As someone claims, Harris has been the nominee for 12 hours, and she's already making clear core Biden national security advisors won't be kept around for another term. No one in the Biden administration should be assumed to keep their jobs in a Harris administration. And it goes on. But nevertheless... Brad Garlinghouse says, jumping to conclusions and assumptions about candidates purely based on political affiliation without any policy proposals is holding the crypto industry back, similar to how tribalism has for years. It's a great point. VP Harris is no stranger to Silicon Valley because she's from that area, has an incredible opportunity to provide a reset on critical issues for U.S. competitiveness like crypto regulation. I'll keep an open mind for now, but also agree that if she uses the same Elizabeth Warren-like rhetoric, then she has miscalculated the political liability that is Gary Gensler. And you know what? She has made that miscalculation. And shout out to Brad for always staying classy. But the reality is she has made that misclassification because she says Bitcoin is money for criminals. Nothing's changed. CNBC talking about Donald Trump speaking at Bitcoin 2024. Take a quick listen. And Bitcoin, by the way, also higher by more than a percent today after the former president appears to have changed his tune on the digital currency this election cycle. Back in 2019, uh, let's recall, he said, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, That's which right. are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Unregulated crypto can facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activity. Again, this was the president in a tweet from 2019. Well, Fast forward to last month. While campaigning for president once again, he's presented himself as a champion of Bitcoin after posting this on Truth Social, quote, vote for Trump, Bitcoin mining may be our last line of defense against a central bank digital currency. Biden's hatred of Bitcoin only helps China, Russia, and the radical communist left. We all want the remaining Bitcoin to be made in the USA. It will help us be energy dominant. This Saturday, Trump is scheduled to speak at the Bitcoin 2024 conference in Nashville, where rumors are swirling that he will announce plans to make Bitcoin a strategic reserve asset. Uh, and now let's get to that part, because is it him doing that? Well, we'll find out here in a second. But I want to let people know, uh, Franklin Templeton, uh, $1.6 trillion under assets under management, says Bitcoin Layer 2s have the potential to unlock new use cases and op opportunities for Bitcoin. Now, I hope that that's the case. I know I've heard uh, David Schwartz say time and again that it's basically a non-starter with these things, but hopefully maybe there's some changes and somebody's developed something to allow that to happen. Now, the reason I say that is because we know intrinsically it really doesn't have the value uh, other than showing the world what was possible, like the first cell phone, right? You know, uh, and that's not a dig on it. I mean, we're grateful for it, aren't we? I'm grateful for the first cell phone, aren't you? I am. So the reality is, is even regardless, uh, regardless of what I know about uh, Bitcoin and the things that have uh, given me pause in the day, I have personally decided that if BlackRock and Fidelity and those have exposure to it, then I'll have exposure to it. That goes in my core tenets of stacking my pennies next to their dollars, right? As you've heard me say a million times, that's why I'm doing that. And as long as they have exposure to it, I will too. Now, seeing layer twos and the potential to unlock new use cases is just me being excited for Bitcoin because it has been said for years and years and years that you can't really do anything with the network other than just use it the way it is. So if they can do this, I think it would bring more value to the network. So I hope that that is the case for Bitcoin. No question about it. But we'll see. Again, not financial advice from me or anyone else. Uh, now, this from Charles Gasparino from Fox, who says the scoop from Eleanor Terrett and himself, Senator Lummis, Cynthia Lummis, is hoping to announce legislation at the Bitcoin conference that would establish a pathway for the Federal Reserve to hold Bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset and is hoping to get buy-in from Donald Trump himself, who is also speaking at the event, Full write-up coming 
in uh, recent uh, in, in, in coming soon. So. Cynthia Lummis plans to announce legislation for strategic Bitcoin reserves, and the conference has started today, I believe, or tomorrow, but I believe it's today. So this is getting exciting. We should get some news here over the weekend, ladies and gentlemen. And again, just to get the, all the information on this that we can get, right, because this would be a big deal if Donald Trump comes out and endorses this bill, knowing that J.D. Vance on his ticket is holding between 100 to 250,000 in Bitcoin and understands crypto quite well. A source familiar with the matter said the specifics of the legislation are unclear. The purpose of the bill is to direct the Federal Reserve to buy Bitcoin and hold it as a reserve asset, similar to how the central bank holds gold and foreign currencies. Again, having a wide array of baskets of commodities and other cash and things like that would be a good idea. I say, bring it. Let's start it. Isn't this, if this is the case and it is picked up and pushed then uh, by Trump, then you're going to know that we are truly moving off a debt-based system to an asset-backed system. So there's a part of this that would make sense, and it would also make sense if they wanted to repatriate a new U.S. Treasury note and leave the Fed note as it is. But we'll see what happens. I think this depends on how much hyperinflation we, hyperinflation we experience, and they want to have the option to explore anything they can use to shore up the dollar while they're in this transformation period to the new digital era. I do believe that, which is going to involve XRP, XLM, XDC, and other assets, not financial advice. Let's listen to what this gentleman says about what Senator Lummis may be introducing this weekend. Breaking news coming out of Fox. We have a Bitcoin strategic reserve bill being worked on by Senator Lummis. Word on the street is that Senator Lummis is going to announce this bill officially at the Bitcoin National Conference. And then from there, she is going to be working to get not only other senators on board with this public policy, but also other U.S. senators. This bill is going to be potentially announced just before just before Donald Trump goes on stage. That would be absolutely massive, giving him a potential layup to get behind this policy in a very public way. As the one who broke the news on Donald Trump potentially getting behind this bill, I couldn't be more excited to see that this effort is moving forward. I think all of us are going to be very much paying attention to when Donald Trump goes on stage. And I'll be in the room and waiting for that potential announcement. Thank you for Senator Lummis and her team. They have worked overtime for years now to advance Bitcoin, not only at the state level, but at the federal level as well. I look forward to the announcement, and I'll see you all at the conference. Okay, so that's what we've got right there. And let's take a look at this, because this leans me back into this. Now presidential functions, since uh, Joe Biden has stepped down and basically said he won't seek re-election, and I'm guessing that he may even resign, uh, and by the way, I've got a uh, matter of fact, let me show you this very quickly. You're going to want this. Take a look at this. Saw this yesterday evening. Great catch by Linda P. Jones. Look very closely at the blue caption below. Because in the red, you see Biden decision to drop out was very personal. And then it says here, Biden ve very well could resign in his speech. So he may not just drop out of the race. He may resign from his presidency. <laughs> okay, then. XRP set for major surge. Analyst says third Elliott wave could hit $22. I'm going into it. This is the charting guy we're looking at here. Shout out to the charting guy. Give him a follow. Shout out to all the OGs in the space. You can see where it is right here. This is looking like into 2025, almost a year from now. I don't have a problem with that. As long as things are going the right way, I don't have a problem with it. Fundamental news, charting news, it's all going the right direction. I'll take it. Because right now the world and the United States is in a mess. And right now, speaking of that, I'll take a $22 XRP. I wouldn't kick it out of bed for eating crackers. Hell no. Right now, we're going into the Freedom Zone, and let me tell you something. People have been joining the Freedom Zone insane level, and I would really ask you to do so, too. Not only is it a great way to support the channel, but you get all the daily YouTube videos with zero Google ads. You get access to the private Telegram group, and it's almost next to nothing to join, and extra content as well that we've been tackling, which has been straight fire with all the events in the U.S. that we've seen happening. 
And we're about to get into it again today, but I do want to let you know, if you join the DPMG, which is a better, a, a, a little better investment for yourself, if you join the DPMG, you'll get the Freedom Zone for free. You'll get access to the library of courses that we have, and right now we're just finishing up a series of how to use automated market makers on the XRP ledger. It is so super easy to do. You're going to love how we set it up for you. It's very easy to understand, and uh, you'll be able to do it in minutes. There's no question about it, and it's not as scary as you think it is, especially if you take it from a very you know, educational point of view, right, for yourself. So make sure you join the DPMG. If you're going to, you'll get the Freedom Zone for free, and I want to let you know right now, the DPMG, I don't like to get that group too big. So once it gets to a certain level, I shut the door on being able to join that group. So it is a very special group of people that I, I just consider extended family, and everybody in there is like-minded. There is no cesspool garbage like on social media. I will get rid of those people immediately if they ever show up in my group because this isn't about money. This is about togetherness. This is about unity. This is about everybody working together to make sure that we're going where we want to go and protecting our wealth and growing it all along the way. No question about it. I hope to see you inside. We're going to get started right now. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. I'll catch all of you in the Freedom Zone. All right.